You're listening to the Comic Crusaders Podcast. I am your host, Al Mega, CEO of Comic Crusaders and Undercover Capes. In this show, I'm sitting down with creators from all walks of life to talk about inspiration, process, the lessons they've learned, and a whole lot more. Wepa! What up, me gente? It's your boy, Al Mega. Welcome to a brand new Comic Crusaders Podcast. Today, that's right, folks, we got an amazing future star legend in the making. He has a dope series that's up to issue six on the Kickstarters right now. This man is a comic book creator, an editor, writer. He's the creator of Area 51, the Helix Project from Pocket Watch Press. Introducing the one, the only Mr. Trevor Fernandez. Linkovich, Wepa, homie, how you doing? Woo. Dude, it's a, it's a blessing to be here, man. That's the best introduction I think I've ever had. So thank you for that. <laughs> let's, get you, let's, get you, let's get you bumped up. And let's, let's Dude, rock I'm it, ready. kiddo. This is Area 51, bro. You got some sci-fi awesomeness, madness going on here that I absolutely yeah. enjoyed. It's just one through five of fire. I cannot wait to see what is going to be transpiring in this new project, Issue 6. But before we get into all that awesomeness, you know, sure. reel it back a bit and get to know who Trevor is a bit. So tell us, where you from originally and what was your first love in the fandom? Wow, great question. So uh, I'm originally from New London, Connecticut, um, small town known as being kind of a, a little hub, a, a little transit spot where, where people might come in from New York because uh, of the train station uh, right on the water. Uh, I went to the University of Connecticut, uh, studied molecular and cellular biology before I realized I didn't want to be miserable. Um, <laughs> now, <laughs> now I'm writing comics, man. And my first love, you know, I, it's I, it, my answer is very unoriginal, unfortunately. Uh, but it was it was Batman. You know, I, I I grew up adoring the animated series with, from Bruce Tim, Paul Dini, uh, and and um, Robert Burnett. And uh, I grew up adoring the um, Justice League animated series written by Dwayne McDuffie, uh, Batman Beyond, all that. And and when I was in high school, actually, I didn't read comics as a kid growing up. Um, when I was in high school, I kind of stumbled upon Final Crisis. Um, mm. And it was well after it had come out. I had gotten the single issues, read it. I was like enraptured by the J.G. Jones artwork. But obviously, it's such a, a mind F, you know, that. I was like, what's going on? I have to know what else is happening. And I saw the name Grant Morrison on that book. I was like, okay, he's doing Batman. So let me check out his Batman. And I went through and absolutely demolished it. And um, I, I remember going to the comic book store and I was like, what do I do next? Like, where do I go? <laughs> Feed like, me. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they were like, this, this, this team, Scott Snyder and Greg Apulo, uh are, are on Batman right now. They, they've done this, this, um, this art called The Court of Owls check it out. And at that point, like there was no stopping me. I remember I bought that first trade, demolished it in a day, immediately went to the store to get the second one. And you know, it was bad because I was a broke ass high school kid who like, I, at the time they, they, with like bigger projects that they would like collect in trade, they would do hardcovers, you know, for, for the sort of in demand ones. And they only had hardcovers for death of the family, which was the third arc in their run. And I remember that extra, like eight bucks being a backbreaker, bro. Like oh, I was uh, like, yeah. I, 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 but I did it. I spent like what little money I had to get <laughs> that. And I went back to the store. I was like, what do I do now? I can't wait for the, the trade. And I started um, picking up comics on, on a monthly basis right then and there. And, and here we are, man, like seven years later. <laughs> Holy shit, seven years in and he already got his own comic book side and a publishing press and all this stuff. Amazing. All right. So, all right. So, and your fandom. So, what were you into as a kid? Just, you know, I mean, you said you said the cartoon. Did you have a clique of, of kids into something cool things or you were kind of a lone wolf out there? Uh, I mean, I, you know, it, yeah. I, I mean, I, I went, to, believe it or not, bro, I went to a Catholic school when I was a little kid. Um, so, I mean, everybody was kind of, uh, the kids were mostly into a lot of that stuff. You know, I was into like the Shonen uh, anime, the Shonen Jump anime okay. um, uh, and a lot of that stuff. And, and 
you know, I've always kind of been the geeky type. I've always kind of liked that stuff that's a, a little bit more adventurous and out there. So, um, you know, eventually it led me to comics. Uh, and, and I, you know, obviously I've chosen to make that my career. So right, that turned so, out pretty well. So, all right. So talk about that then. So here you are be, becoming a consumer, you know, starting in high school of comics. When did mm -hmm. the creative spark hit you? You know, it's, it's weird, man. I, so like I said, I was going to school for molecular and cellular biology. And, uh, I, when I was 19, I had like bought my first house, um, outside of the campus. Cause I was like, man, I'm getting absolutely destroyed by paying like on campus, uh, rent. And I had, I, you know, I had worked all throughout high school and into college and was still working. And so I was like, you know what, let me, let me get something where I have a little bit of equity. So I bought a small house about 15 minutes away from Yukon. Uh, and once I kind of had that freedom and I was living alone and I was like, man, I don't, I didn't have a lot of friends that like comics. Uh, and I really wanted to talk about it. So I started a YouTube channel, uh, where I did reviews and, and, and some interviews and, you know, it scaled pretty well for somebody who was like incredibly inconsistent. And, um, you know, I had the privilege of, of getting to interview a lot of guys that I really admire in the industry from artists to writers to inkers. Um, and, you know, sometimes they would ask, like, how come, you know, you're not making comics? Like, you you seem to have a, a you know, a sort of knack for discussing it, at least. And I was like, I don't know. It just never seemed feasible. And in March, or excuse me, in October 2019, uh, I went to New York Comic Con and I went to uh, a Marvel Fanfare panel where I asked a question uh, to C.B. Sabolsky and Chris Claremont, which... Mind you, like this question, it could have gone either way. Like the, the type of question very well could have pissed them off, but it seemed to have <laughs> that because I had asked a question about like the difficulty of balancing the artistic integrity and the desire to tell like a very specific story and also like the wants and desires of like the larger corporate entity, you know. And um, CB ap approached me after the panel and we talked a little bit. Uh, and he's like, have you ever thought about working in comics? And I was like, not seriously until the editor in chief of Marvel asked me this, oh, you know, if I've ever thought about working <laughs> in comics. Um, so he gave me his card and he had me apply for like an, uh, an editorial internship. And I did. And I interviewed in March of 2020 uh, when hand sanitizer, I was in New York the week that hand sanitizer and toilet paper was selling out everywhere. And um, things seemed to have been going well. I had gotten a call back after the interview and then uh, lockdown happened. And about a week later, uh, I got a call back from uh, a woman by the name of Sarah in their HR department who had mentioned that uh, they were still you know, thinking about me. But you know, she's very candid. She said, unfortunately, we had to furlough some of our editorial staff. A lot of books have been put on hold. We, we're not really in a position to take on any new people, um, but we'll keep you up to date. And I, you know, I was miserable for from a couple months for a couple months because I, I went from being in this position where like, I never thought that a career in comics would ever be possible. And then, like, you know, I'm at I'm at the threshold. You know what I mean? I'm interviewing with big boys <laughs> with, with the biggest publisher, the biggest comic book publisher in the world. Um, and and you know, I was heartbroken. And I, a, a couple months later, I got a call back. Just again, them saying, you know, we want you to know we're thinking about you, but we don't know when we're going to go back to the office. And at that point, I was like, you know we don't know when this is going to end. We don't know what's going to happen. And I was just like, I don't want to ask for permission to do what I want to do anymore. So, um, I had had like this really small inkling about this, this story with like shape shifting aliens because my, you know, academic career was in molecular and cellular biology. My, my focus was in genetics. Um, you so like science. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. So I just, I started, uh, I started penning that story and, you know, here we are now two years since since uh, since that point, and uh, I have not looked back. Amazing. All right, so talk about then, you know, being a young buck and you know, you were about to have this amazing opportunity, but then you decided to do this on your own. What was that learning curve like? It was hard. It was really hard because there was a part of me that really resented the situation, you know? Like, I, uh, th there was an opportunity before me that I never thought I would have, and suddenly it felt so attainable and so tangible, and then it was gone. Um, so uh, when I got into it, part of it was just a hunger to prove that I had the chops and to prove that I could I could tell a story and produce a, a book that was on a professional quality, given my you know lack of experience. And um, you know I, I think the the lesson I learned was that if you if you put the effort in and you take the time to study your craft and 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 are constantly 
unwilling to be satisfied by what you do, you can you can make great things happen. And I feel confident about what we've been able to build over the course of this series. Um, like this is the first project uh, I've ever written, I've ever worked on. And so it's it's really funny because I, I have this sort of tongue in cheek sales pitch if I'm at like a convention and somebody, you know, say somebody buys the first issue, right? And then they go back and read it and they love it and they come back the next day to buy the rest. And I'm like, that's so great that you love that first issue because my first shit is my worst shit. Um, cause I'm always <laughs> getting better. I always want to get better. And I, I'm, and I want to, I want to reach those heights, man. I want to be one of the best in the world at what I do. Um, cause, uh, like I had mentioned, I've mentioned on, on, a, on an interview with, um, uh, with Johnny, it, it's like when you're a great storyteller, it means you are ultimately great at connecting with people, um, through story. And I think that's powerful. And that's, that's, that's what I want to do. That's what I, that's, you know, that's what I want to um kind of live my life by so talk about them building the team that you started building to build yeah. this baby yeah absolutely man i've got i've got a, a ridiculously studied team of guys working on this book that uh oh man like they they make everything possible so um for issues one through four we had an artist out of brazil named marcelo salaza um i had decided for a couple of reasons to move on and from for issues five and six we have uh the incredible like mind numbingly good Samuel Ibunze um, on inks and he does the a covers. Uh, this guy is just like an absolute artistic powerhouse. He's, he's so intuitive when it comes to not only creating something that is visually striking, but he's, he's a storyteller at heart. And that's what you want out of an artistic collaborator because the, the there there is a totally separate language to doing sequential comic book art versus doing a pinup or a cover. Um, and and this guy is one of those rare breeds that does both on the highest level possible. So um, it, it is a privilege, privilege to work with him. How did he even find him? <laughs> oh man! So funnily enough, when I that fourth, so when we kickstarted the fourth issue, um, it, at the time it was our our best one we had ever done, and we had unlocked a third cover. We had on, on, normally only done two covers per issue, and so I had found Sam just like a bunch of perusing online. I had seen that he had done a couple things, uh, a couple things in the community. And um, I, I commissioned a cover from him. And the, the thing I loved about the process of working with him wasn't that he necessarily got it right away. It was the osmotic process by which we were able to build upon where we started and come up with something that was like just incredibly resonant to the book. Um, and when I had decided that I was looking to move on, um, from the prior artist, I was like, you know, I, I really liked, I really liked the, the collaborative nature of what we were able to do with that cover. So, um, I had asked him for some samples. I had asked him, you know, to, I had paid him to do a couple sort of mock-ups because I had mentioned, I had mentioned that I was interested in, in finding a new collaborator. And, and okay. I had said, you know, I want to have some of these sort of stylistic elements transfer over so that it's not a jarring transition as, as that can happen in comics sometimes. Uh, but at the same time I said, you know, I don't want you to feel like you have to hamper yourself in order to cater to that because I, I want to bring you on because I, I think what you do is amazing. So I think we are able to find a great balance and, um, you know, Sam barring any like crazy disaster is someone that I want to work with forever, um, on, on, on a bunch of different projects. And fortunately after this, uh, we do have some really cool things in the works. Oh my God! It doesn't. This guy won't stop. Look at him. He really does want to take over the world. <laughs> I do. I do, man. And uh, yeah, regarding the the rest of the team, uh, we have an incredibly talented colorist out of Brazil, Marcio Freire, who who's been on the book the entire time. He's colored almost every cover we've had. I think he's probably colored at least 70 percent of them. Uh, as of issues five and six, he actually did his own cover for each of them, the C cover, oh, cool. and they are gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. Um, the guy has a, a really rich understanding of how colors are going to contribute to the storytelling by way of tone and atmosphere. Oh, yeah. um, and and it's, it's a beautiful thing. And of course we have uh, the industry gold standard for lettering on this book, Taylor Esposito. Oh, who is okay. Just, <laughs> yeah, who is, man. Who is just ubiquitous, man. You find them everywhere. Um, you know, and, and shout out to him for winning a tripwire and a Ringo this year. Well, he, it, oh, salute, bro. Awesome. Good for him. Yeah, man. So it's it's a pleasure. He was actually like one of the 
when I decided when and started rounding up a team, he was like the first person I wanted to get to because I know that lettering is often the first thing neglected in indie comics. And, you know, every element of the process is crucial, right? Like the, mm-hmm. your letterer is effectively like if you're making a film analogy, they're, they're your composer, right? So they do, they do a lot of the unsung sort of stitching of your story that, that people might not notice the most, but is crucial because if you notice it too much, they're probably not doing their job right. And uh, I was just so grateful that um, he he heard my pitch and and thought it was serviceable at least and decided to work with us. And um, yeah, man, it's it's been it's been a pleasure. I think we got a great crew. All right, best. So before we get into six and showing off this amazing project that's live now, folks, give us a little bit. What's Area Fifty One? So uh, this story is a sci-fi thriller. Uh, about uh, a boy from two worlds who's forced to excavate the trauma of his past when a mysterious figure puts his father's murder into question. And Kent, our protagonist, is driven to uncover the circumstances surrounding his father's murder, and it sends him spiraling into the jaw of this massive Cold War genetics conspiracy and forces him to face a twisted ghost from his past that challenges everything he knows about himself and ultimately what it means to be human. So it's a super personal story along with being kind of rich in, in the sci-fi genre uh, uh, trappings and, and and tools, right? Because like I said, I, I come from a science background. Um, it's ultimately a story about identity and memory and reconciling those things with loss. So despite being a story about shape-shifting aliens, I think uh, the story is incredibly human. Oh, there's tons of stuff and emotion throughout it. Again, uh, reading the first five issues, having that honor, if you will. Oh, thank you, man. And, and yeah, yeah, you definitely do connect with the characters. I think that's very important because we don't care about the character, then who cares about the story, right? But Correct. you make characters that you could actually care for. Yeah, you know, you're concerned what does in fact happen. You are curious as to what's popping. So I think you've weaved together a very wonderful tale here. And again, oh, with what, what's popping with six, I can't wait. I mean, <laughs> folks, this is live now, folks. Now, and let, let, why not? Let's show the video, huh? Let's show the sure. video. It's sort of video. Oof. Look at that. <laughs> Uh-oh. Watch out now. <laughs> yo, beautiful, yo. Look at that. Look at that page. Yeah. Now I want to see this is the motion comic. <laughs> Woo! Right there. Look at that. What? What, folks? That is a big weapon and a half for sure. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What's going on here, brother? I mean, what, what's popping with six? Yeah, you hear the background music, folks. I don't know. <laughs> look at that, folks. Just real quickly, the, the he's looking for sixty five hundred, and look at this. With forty one days to go, he has ninety five backers. He has a five thousand four hundred forty dollars. He's almost there, folks. Let's give him a great push. This is independent comics at its best, baby. All right, so talk to us. What's a fifty one number six over here? What's popping off, man? So. um 
and first of all, thank you for all the kind words. And, and I'm, I'm really glad that this story is, is connecting with you because this sixth one is just like the most emotionally raw, the most visceral. Um, it is, it is, you know, when I talk in the pitch about this idea of Kent having to face this twisted ghost from this pat from his past, that's where issue six comes in, you know? Um, and, and it, it changes everything, you know, you get to the end of the issue five and, um, uh, yeah. th there's a threat that you think is going to sort of be the ultimate end all be all of the story. And it, there might be something bigger and badder behind the, the curtain. Um, and, and, and in, in the form of a challenge that, um, is going to put to the test, everything Kent has come to learn about himself. And, um, you know, it, 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 oh, man, it's just, it's super raw, you know, you, you, it's, it's hard to explain like this last issue and the, the setting being like deep in a, in a desert in, in New Mexico, um, or excuse me, in Nevada is like it forces all of the emotion and all of the the sort of hmm, the, the 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 sort of more visceral energy that's boiling to come straight to the surface and it is very much this this final hurrah uh, and it is this like i said prior it, it puts everything kent's learned to the test about himself and, and mm. forces him to you know for lack of better terms uh nut up or shut up Oh yeah, and this is and you know throughout the story he is learning more of himself, you know, mm -hmm. especially in, in in what's going on <laughs> around him, having to put himself in certain predicaments and have to do things, mm -hmm. which is insane. And again, yeah, like you said, that last issue, woof, man, did that leave me with you know you're a cliffhanger bastard, man, <laughs> killing me, you're killing me. They're like, oh, what the fuck, got a scene number six, man, what happened here? You have me concerned to death, so I can't wait to see number six. Um, that I really do see the, even number five, which you call the penultimate issue. Um, definitely it, it was emotional because there's a lot of anger uh, being expressed in that in that particular issue. Yeah, man, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, like like you had alluded to earlier. Um, for me, you know, it, it is beautiful to to engage with stories that have these massive, like, thoughtful and like deep worlds, but ultimately nothing matters if if you can't connect with the characters and so when i set out to tell my first story uh it was character first it had to be emotional it had to be something that people can connect with and, and feel and relate to uh and so you know this this being the last issue it is very much like the the fulcrum point of that this is this is the peak of the mountain um and and i'm really excited because i think we've we've been able to build to a point where the people that have gotten this far have really connected with our cast of characters. Um, and uh, I, I think that they'll, they'll, they'll be blown away by what happens at the end of the story. But this is not going to be the end of their story or is it? Well, this is for now, this is the final chapter. This okay. is the last, the last story that I have to tell um, with these characters right now, because I, I think that, you know, even the best comics, the, the greatest stories in comics will sometimes have the tendency to extend way past their shelf life because they become mm -hmm. popular. And for me, my number one priority is is delivering a story that that matters and that is um, not just consistent, but that that sticks this landing. Right. Because I've, I've set up these these emotional stakes for these characters. And I think it, it's my responsibility to land the plane. Mm. And so for me, if I never came back to these characters, if I never came back to this world, I would be okay with ending it here at issue six. Now, I'm not, that's not to say that I couldn't ever do a spinoff in the future. Uh, if I had a, a fantastic idea, I would be open to it, but only if it comes organically and only if it's, if it's, better than what we managed to do here because i see no point in sort of reopening the wounds uh that this story is certainly and hopefully going to be inflicting on the reader uh <laughs> if if we can't deliver on that you know so um while while it is it is a, a little melancholy to like say goodbye to these characters i think that we we give them i think we give them a very natural place to to say goodbye you know excellent excellent i mean and who did this cover because this I mean, for, first off, let's start with the first one that popped up. Who did this? This is 
So, 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 so that's the interior artist. That's Samuel oh. Iwunze. He, uh, he inked and colored this cover. And for us, this one was so pivotal um, when we were talking about the design um, because I, I was talking to Sam and I was like, I want this. He had the hardest job because I, I wanted it to ultimately represent everything that we've been working toward in the series so far. And it was, you know, the, the this idea that in order for Kent to live and to thrive and to, to, to take hold of his identity, there's a part of himself that he's going to have to let die, you know? And so there's this idea of his, his body sort of decomposing there towards the bottom. And you can see like his organs and his bones and, and yet there's life, there's foliage, there's, there's, you know, plants coming up. Uh, from the remains and you have the the sort of splitting faces that are representing the phases of of death in order to allow for new growth um you know this this issue is is the only one that we've given a subtitle for this sixth issue the title of it is the death of the boy formerly known as kent armstrong um mm. now some people probably you know some people may take that literally some people may take it metaphorically some people may do both and and this cover i think distills all of that down to one immaculate image. Shit, well done, man. No wonder you got picked on the teeth. <laughs> and look at this. Oof. Yeah, this was this was done by uh, man, this is an incredibly talented artist out of Spain. His name's Adrian Bonilla. Um, he has done every single B cover, every single variant cover throughout the series so far. He's done the covers for both the issue one and two uh, second editions, second re the, the reprints. Um, and and here, you know, he just channels everything. And uh, this cover was uh, co-colored by Adrian and our series colorist, Marcio. And, and I think they just did a phenomenal job. We actually, when I, when I went to uh, Adrian to talk about this cover, one of the things I really wanted to play around with conceptually was like that um craven last hunt spider-man cover where he's mm. on the ground but I, I didn't want to necessarily copy the composition of that i liked the metaphor of it and, and i think that we could sort of reallocate that well to this story because you have all all the if you look if you look closely all the hands are very deliberately designed they're the hands of all the people in kent's life throughout the story that have tried to control him tried to bring him down and tried to deny him strength through identity and as he's rising up from the sand you see him sort of transforming and acknowledging the side of himself um and 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 so you know you you realize that the this extraterrestrial and this human side they coexist they're both the part of kent they don't need to be so singular um and being that this last issue is is this combustion chamber of kent reuniting with his dad uh, and, and and having a level of conflict due to the fact that both of them were changed, uh, uh, changed sort of irrevocably uh, since they've last seen each other. You know, I, I wanted to to sort of have the ghost of their former relationship. And then the lightning there, you know, we've used this metaphor of this hollow thunder that is echoed throughout Kent's life uh, in these very pivotal moments. And we really wrap that up in that in this sixth issue and bring this back for the end of the story. And so, yeah, man, I think these guys just created a, a, an absolutely mind numbing cover here. It, it's absolutely gorgeous. Then look at this. Holy smokes. What's going on here? And, and this so was our pain in this cover. <laughs> and this, this was our series colorist, man. This is Marcio just absolutely wow. killing it. And, 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 you know, this cover we titled fracture um, and, and you see, you know, the younger Kent sort of dead. And, and, and we talk about, we talked earlier about how Kent has to kill off this part of himself um, in order to truly live. And uh, what's cool is that you have like the, the figure sort of made out of the constellations and the stars. And if you look at the other side of that figure, one half of it is Kent and one half of it is his father, Roswell. Um, because th there's this idea of Kent wanting to live in service to the memory of his father and questioning oh. how best to do that. And uh, I think Marcio, I mean, hit an absolute home run with this one. Yeah, man. The more you look at it, the more it just pops out beautiful. Thank well you, done. Man. Your homie, the boss, kid, what's going on? <laughs> Dude, I, you what? know, I, I think if, if anything, the, the most I'll give myself credit for is I know I know great artists when I see them, and I've been fortunate enough to be able to pick them out of the uh, the haystack and, and put them on this book, man. There you go. He got the eye for talent, kiddos. Okay, to sepa. 
And what's this right here? What's, what's popping here with this brand new edition? And yeah, so cover. What's, it, it's it's a new, uh, it's a second printing of issue one because we're almost completely sold out of the first print. Um, so we it features a brand new cover by Adrian Bonilla with colors by Marcio Freddi. Um, it has a pull quote from the uh, the writer of the current writer of Savage Avengers at Marvel, David Pepos. Shout outs to him. Um, and what's cool is, you know, I never thought that inside of like a year, I would be reprinting my first comic book. So I wanted to make it special. So it's actually embossed. So all the figures and the smoke are actually like raised off the cover. And we featured um, an introduction from an iconic Daredevil writer, DG Chichester. Um, and then in the back of the book, there's like a behind the scenes feature where you can look at like the stripped raw inks of the cover with all of the original coloring notes and then a director's commentary page. So we, we, we really pulled out all the stops with this one. Cool. Cool. What? Very cool. And, and, you know, and before we keep talking about this, you know, pocket watch press is the name that keeps popping. What's pocket watch? <laughs> that's my that's my publishing company man and it's funny man like i i really only created the company to add like the air of legitimacy uh <laughs> to be honest with you because i think when you look at that logo and you hear pocket watch press it sounds like something that's been around for forever you know and and it's only two years old uh so it was part of it was airing a, a bit of legitimacy and i hope that in the future uh if i can continue to rise um and 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 sort of you know, put myself in a position where, where I have a little bit more of uh, uh, quote unquote fortune to spread. I'd like to bring on, you know, other young, hungry, talented creators that are trying to do something different and, and, and break the mold. Uh, but for now, you know, it's, it's me, myself and I, and, and the, the incredible pack of talented artists that I've had the fortune of working with. Excellent. There you go, folks. Check out the press. I've been showing it off, right? You can go to their link tree right there, Pocket Watch Press. You got the links for everything. I mean, everything, all right? Mm -hmm. Can, don't, don't subscribe, like, love, everything with that. Follow. And it's, this is the project I've been showing. The link will be below shortly. That way you can just click away. And, and, and I think in that cheddar. And I think the, the link tree that's in the description, if you click that, it, it opens up a landing page with several links of which the Kickstarter page is one. And and speaking of reprints, I, I'm really excited to announce Ooh. that as of last night, we've unlocked a second printing of issue two because issue two is close to selling out now. Another hey. beautiful Adrian Bonilla cover with colors by Marcio Freddi. Um, and this one is actually going to feature a spot gloss. So still something cool and, and different and premium. And we're going to do a similar thing where we're going to have more behind the scenes features in the back of this book to make it even more special. Holy, I mean, with that many days to go, I think you're gonna about to unlock everything you got. <laughs> I hope so. And uh, these are these are just some some teasers at some art from Seth Adams, who's a a cover artist uh, who I believe is in in living in Singapore right now. Uh, incredibly talented. He's worked with larger names like Marvel and Dynamite. Uh, and if you keep scrolling down, you'll get a little tease for the cover that you can unlock Ooh. from him. Uh, he did a special variant cover from us, a, an absolute stunner. Um, and if we reach nine thousand dollars for this Kickstarter campaign, we'll we'll unlock, you know, the 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 full you know the full uh, gamut of what that cover has to offer. So, and and look at the tea to some interior art here, folks. I mean, look at this. Look at that. Look at home. I will go to the roof and see the Empire State Building, just like that. <laughs> It looks well. Uh, that was done, kid. I see that building every every night. So I'm like, yeah, yo, we need to taste the home. Thank the only thing that's bro. missing is the smell of weed and ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> but that's character. That's character. <laughs> Man, look at this. Well, you apparently have hung out in the city. Never in the era where we really had those cabs, though. I remember that. I, you know, when I was a very little kid, probably the last of those. Yeah, getting well, on one. You got well, to lay down on the floor. <laughs> this this story <laughs> takes place in the seventies, man. So we had to have the classics. I dig it, man. Hey, wait a minute. No porn theaters, wait. <laughs> 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 oh man, the way you guys capture the scenery here, first, it, it, it is eye candy because it, it keeps the eye moving. Thank you. You know, and, and you feel the cinematic flow to it. So what I'm saying, you. I was joking that you know you were showing it almost as a motion comic in, in that trailer. Like I, I almost love to see a whole this whole story done like that. 
You got some Thank good you, voice man. actors going. That shit'll be fire, son. That'd be dope. I I would I would be I would be, be ecstatic, man. If Let's manifest, baby. Let's manifest. <laughs> but again, folks, I mean, do you know how to agree? How beautiful. I know there's folks watching. Look at this beautiful, beautiful artwork. And I think it and only again, gets panel better. work. It only gets better. Oh, you know, it's, it's, not lying either, right there, because you could see you know progression in every issue. Is like you know it's it's better than the last. They, you know with intent, you could tell that it, it's definitely like no, we're gonna do better than last, and you see the quality in each book just improve tenfold. So again, kudos that that that's a that's a a, a team that knows how to work together, very symbiotic, if you will. Thank kudos. you, bro. And what's just cool about it. those two page that pages that you showed is that like every campaign, there's like an option to get drawn in, and that was a backer who got drawn oh, really? in as the, as the first murder victim. Yeah. Um, That's a backer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So every issue we offer that. So um, within, you know, like 30 minutes of launch, somebody actually picked up the one for issue six. But there is, uh, I did end up opening up slots for people to get drawn into my next project. I opened up three of those slots. Two of those are already gone. But if anybody okay. wants to be immortalized, and you get a bunch of other amazing perks in there too, like being credited as an executive producer of the book in the book. Oh, cool. um, amongst a bunch of other cool stuff. If anybody's interested in being immortalized by by an incredible crew of artists, great way to yeah. do it. And hopefully you get killed in a cool way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the way, as you scroll down, you'll see, because I point out uh, when you get to the issue six pages uh, where uh, the somebody's likeness would get inserted, and it is a gnarly death. It is such a good way to go. Really? Oh, yeah, man. dude. And look at this, look at this. Again, when you go into these memories with the black and white, love it. Thank you, man. Oh, man. This is a gorgeous book. Here we go again. More more cool panels and uses. Again, the layout. Widescreen movie. <laughs> and I ain't fair. You better get off soon. It's gonna be <laughs> <laughs> look at that. that. That's somebody that you'll get to, to, to meet. And then you'd be pleasantly surprised later on and, and a whole bunch of cool things that happened. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. This scene was great too. <laughs> kind Thank of you, man. effed up reasoning, you, if you will. Again, folks, you gotta, you gotta read the book to understand what the hell I'm saying, yo. But uh, and, this was very foul. <laughs> and what's cool is, is this exact page layout directly homages the moment when his father in the flashback in issue one saves saves that child and and the we we actually the way we designed the page was to completely mirror that moment mm, so if you oh if you God. if you have a, a keen eye you can go to issue one you'll see the page that i'm talking about in the flashback and once you get to issue four uh if you hold them side by side they're mirrors of one another oh that is so, okay i got i gotta peep this again now after the show <laughs> I won't be rude, I promise. I won't <laughs> do it now. Look at this, folks. Again, it's super. See how the story keeps developing. You see what I'm saying about the art? I mean, look at this two page spread. It's just insane, yo. But reads so good. Thank you. It reads so that. good. And, and like you said, you know, you're working with an amazing letter where that just knows where to put them word bubbles, knows where to put them letters. You know what I mean? The, the, mm. Doesn't disturb the art. And just again, eye candy, folks. Totally yeah, yeah. eye candy. Taylor absolutely murdered it on that page, man. It, the, once you get down towards like the last couple panels, it, it becomes a really difficult uh, uh, sequence to letter. Sorry, Taylor, uh, but he did a, <laughs> a great job, you know, balancing the flow. Uh, and, and I couldn't have asked for anything better. And when you work with pro as much as you get, I mean, look at this. Wonderful. That was a fun sequence to write. That was a fun sequence to write. And I'm digging the use of the red and the blue, like the blue pill, red pill. <laughs> <laughs> I was popping. Hey, look, look at this action, everything. And then you you get into yeah. issue five there, where where <laughs> Sam steps in and just man. And look at that, look at that page right there. Amazing. That's, that's a spread if I've ever seen one, man. Heck yeah. I just love it, the, the the fracture. Like this, so simple, but yet so well done and cool. Thank you, bro. You know? I appreciate Small that. Small things like this. I, I just dig it. 
the, we, the capturing of the motion so well. Oh. Thank oh. you, man. We we really have been as we've gone on and as maybe maybe it's cockiness, I don't know, um, or just inebriation, but I <laughs> we're we're always trying to push page design and, and find new ways to capitalize on what makes comics special in the way that comics deliver story. Uh and a lot of that is through is through page design. Um and, and we you know particularly in the in the later issues we really begin to swing for the fences by doing crazy layouts like that and and i'm man, a like, big fan of that big fan of that i mean yes i love my single page panel but when, you know it's about when you do a two-page spread it's about you know, don't just do it for the for the heck of it have it have value have yeah. it say something important i mean here there's a lot of stuff going on this is a great way to uh do an action scene I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. Shout out to uh, Sam and uh, Sam, the ink, uh, the penciler, inker, and Marcio, the colorist, for uh, absolutely killing it, man. Wait till you guys see how why all this is going on. Oh <laughs> man, I was shocked. I'm like, damn, really? Are, are you serious, son? This mother effer, I can't stand him, son. <laughs> <laughs> And there we go. The, 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 this, this, yeah, this last that fifth issue is just it, it's a brawl, yo. It's a brawl. Great fighting, great sequences, well done, great surprises. Thank F you, and man. cliffhanger and a half that I need to know what the heck is going on now <laughs> after this. I'm excited here. for you. Oh man. Oh look at this some time. Spoilers, what happened? Oh man. Oh, you bastard. You bastard. You did it, didn't you? <laughs> hey. Oh, damn. Vicious. Wait for it. You, Vicious. You'll see. Isn't that a cool way to die? <laughs> oh, man. That's what I'm telling you, man. Really pushing those page layouts, you know, trying to do something oh, special. Man. And Sam delivers, man. But yo, that fancy cheese. Look at this line work, everything, the Roy motion. Woof. Hey, man, oh. I'm privileged. I'm privileged, man. Oh. I work with some talented guys. Yeah, definitely blessed. And look at all these goodies here, all the different covers, all available. These are all add ons, right? And look at mm -hmm. just that. You got some swag, too. Ah, producer. There you go, folks. That, that's right. Yo, show it off. Be proud to support Indy like that. Look at all that awesome stuff. Woo! A mini print. Hey, look at that. That is sick. Thanks, bro. Hey, we got some pins, too. Hold on. I got to get me some metal. Those are metal or plastic? They're enamel, bro. Enamel, hey, look at that. that Super part, premium. I, I need me one of those. I need me one of those, man. Hey, all types of pins. Woo! With the collectors, bookmarks, everything. There goes that squad. There goes the amazing squad we've been talking about, just kicking ass. Hell of a group, man. Worldwide. Look, folks, look how simple it is. You can start with $10 because you, you, you got it like that. You know what I mean? 10 it's, bucks because... You just want to support the Rican Batman says it's fuego. <laughs> All right. It's fuego. Bro. It's fuego. Look, folks. Now, if you want to get a digital copy, as low as $5. That's it. Five bucks to start. You get a beautiful digital copy of number six. Again, deliverable by May 2023. You know, you get the first print issue cover A, seven bucks, and, and that's actual print, right? Yeah, man. It's and, and they're th it's super thick printing, man. Like it's. Hey. Three times thicker I than like them thick. Yeah, you know what? We all do, bro. You you see the first half of my last name, you know I like it that way. Yes, man. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Look, seven bucks for eight bucks. You get that Bonilla variant. Ten bucks, you get cover C variant. All right. Twenty-five bucks, you get a digital. Oh wow, that's awesome. For twenty-five, you get that whole run on Digi. Yes, sir. Folks. And, and you get both yeah. versions of issue one. So you get that original, Ooh. that original version, and then the second one with all the behind the scenes stuff as well. So seven oh, comics cool. digitally for twenty five dollars. That's it's like over one hundred and eighty pages of story. Oh hell yeah, yo! Most graphic novels that charge you that much. You're lucky if you get a hundred pages. Mm -hmm. Think about that, folks. 
there's, there's definitely value for your buck right there. You got the variant cover trio right there for 25, 35. You got the artist print and cover bundle. Hey, well, does this include print or is this all digi? Yeah. So the cool thing is, is beyond a certain point, all the tiers get all the digital issues after the $25 because I know that there are some, some collectors that, that are just prized the, the beautiful artwork and don't want to pull it out. And, and for me, I appreciate that. And, 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 but I, I want people to read the story. So yeah, for me, course. it's like at that point, man, after that $25 tier, all the physical rewards for collectors that might not want to resurface the books outside of that sealed bag and board, or that maybe that CG seed, uh, mm -hmm. you know, casing, you can still read the book. So you get all those digitals, uh, you get the A and the B cover and you get a beautiful, beautiful art print, 11 by 17, super Ooh. premium. And, and if we hit eight grand on this campaign, it automatically will get upgraded to a foil art print and they're beautiful. Oh, a foil. Oh man. That's going to be looking sexy on the walls. What? Yeah, man. Yeah, a, a catch up complete, complete story catch up bundle for 40 bucks. This all print. Ooh, ooh, damn. It, it, I'm about this is like a scroll. It's a Keep value, rolling. bro. It's a value. <laughs> a great value. Look at that. For 40, you can't even get this many books at a comic shop for 40 bucks. No, sir. For real. Holy smokes. That is great. 75 the totality collectors pack. So what is this? One of each? Pretty much almost every cover we've ever done. Close to all, all I think, except for maybe two. So you get a bunch of the secret variant covers. Uh, you get, you get all the printings of issue one. I believe it is, it is bonkers. And again, you still get that digital catch up as well. Dope, dope. dope. So yeah, man, I think in there, there's like over a dozen comics, well over a dozen comics. And we got a lab assistant over here and it includes a t-shirt. Hey, yeah, uh, that 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 super dope Helix Project T-shirt that features the artwork from the issue six cover. If you scroll up a little bit, and it's yep. exclusive, I will never reproduce that shirt ever again after this campaign. So it's that one right, right there. there. So never to be reproduced again, and they're always super soft too. Super exclusive, soft. folks. You know, if you want to be looking looking good, so that ain't gonna be made again. All right, you're only gonna find them in a thrift shop if at all. All right, in the future. 50 years from now, and then we sell it to you for $200, that T-shirt, you know? <laughs> That'd on. be wild. And, of course, because he is a scientist, he needed to do a scientific bundle here. So mm -hmm. while we're talking about this Helix Project Lab Scientist Bundles. Yeah, man, you get you get variant covers, you get all the digitals, you get the T-shirt, you get stickers, you get the art print. Um, uh, you get a, a Q&A with me and some of the – and Sam. Um, you know, and you get my signature free on all the books. I'll personalize it. You get that pocket watch press, beautiful, shiny gold and silver enamel pen. Excellent. Excellent. And there you go. Retailers, retailers, get in on this. Support Indie. Buck 35, you get a comic shop retailer package. I love when you guys do these as well. You know, give the shops the opportunity to put some shelf porn up there. So what <laughs> up, what up? What, what are the shops getting here? Dude, they're getting a value. I, I'm a big proponent of the local comic store and how you know yes. they are really the foundation behind the community and they allow us to, to connect with, with, with each other. And so uh, I deliver better value than what a publisher is going to be able to get from any of the major distributors, Diamond or Lunar, but they're getting more story, no advertisements, much higher print quality. So you're going to get several, you're going to get pretty much almost every variant we've ever done in various quantities. So you get a total of 10 copies of issue one, six copies of issue two, five copies of issue three, four, five, and six. Uh, you get stickers, you get retailer promotional material that we make exclusively for the shop. Uh, mm -hmm. And you're going to get a, a digital promo pack that I'm going to create for shops to have a QR code where if a customer is kind of on the fence, maybe about buying some of the stuff, they're going to get some free digital previews of the books that the shops can use to, uh, you know, just communicate to the readers Good what they'd be idea. missing out on if they don't support it through the shop. Uh, and all the shops also all get shouted out in the back of the book as well. They get printed. I let everybody know once they get to the back of the book, where those shops are uh, and, and who's carrying our stuff. So I'm like I said, man, I'm a big proponent at, uh, of, making sure that the shops know that they are valued and appreciated. And, and this is my, my attempt at doing that. That is awesome. Better jump in retailers. Don't be bullshitting. All right. 
And over here, a buck sixty, we get a script or art portfolio review. Private at that. Hey, what what, what was popping? Yeah, man. And I think it's pretty affordable. You know, anybody that's come to know me uh, over the last two years knows that I have a I have a pretty surgical eye for storytelling. So, you know, I'm going to be able to do or I'm going to do my best to break down the material that's handed to me and, and give, you know, really detailed advice on where I think, you know, this the perspective writer or artist can expand upon. Uh, and on top of that, you know, they get the entire series in digital. They get an early access copy to issue six uh, before it actually officially comes out. Uh, art prints, um, the t-shirt, and and some of my digital script files that I'm going to annotate to kind of walk them through how I approached some of the things the way I did. Oh, look at that, folks. You get comics and education when you're trying to step into the business. You know what I mean? For real, that's great. What? Then you get that producer status where you get that dope, dope hoodie right there. What? All right. All the tears. You get credit as producer, like he said. Were they never to be reproduced? Producer sweater, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Wepa, yeah, yeah. look at this, yo. But well, no, no consultation. Just want to make that clear. I know it may be too small to see it on screen now, but editorial consultation is not included. So everything from before except that. Yep, with the addition of that that dope sweater, the producer credit. It also adds the C cover, the secret variant to issue six. Uh, you do still get a small batch Q and A where we limit it to to five people at a time. You get to ask me and Sam questions about the process. Um, obviously, the signatures and, and and all that extra stuff. So you know, you you get to be a part of this. You get to be immortalized in the book forever in that way and credited. So I think that's a really special opportunity to to oh, you know. Okay. I see. So each one of these is different for the uh, executive producer uh, with art. So here it's with Sam and the other ones with Ma Ma Marcio, right? Mm -hmm. Excellent. For 500, you, get, you know, Adrian. What? And, yeah, man. Uh -huh. And then this is that last spot that we have for you to get that executive producer tier with almost everything prior uh, at Ooh. the bottom there. But you can get drawn into my next project minutes to midnight there's only one of those slots left get it done folks look but look at all this stuff you get my gosh Woo. yes sir what and for a rack right there another retail exclusive retail exclusive cover right there whoa yes, sir. yeah wow yeah. look we, how we, money fucking books Woo. we get we get one of our one of our incredibly talented artists to do a wow. cover exclusive to your shop only your shop Whoa. will be receiving this book. So it's one of a kind collector's item for speculators everywhere. Uh, and, and, you know, we'll do some, some pretty special stuff uh, for the shop. Cause I think that's, I mean, I've never, I've never had a shop, you know, pick up an exclusive cover uh, of one of my books and, and that would blow my mind. So it's going to happen 2023. Let's make it happen. Yes, sir. <laughs> and then, like I said, we had one slot to get drawn into the issue six of the Helix Project where you die by virtue of projectile alien head. But that's already been <laughs> Ben Swite, what an awesome, amazing death, whoever did that. Can't wait to see you get smashed up like that. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> but again, folks, you see all this? This is amazing, yo. The big boys going to be giving you cool stuff like this. Mm -hmm. This is indie. This is what indie is about, you know, and they really want to take care of their reading clientele. I mean, awesomeness, top Thank to you, bottom. Man. Support this beautifully amazing project. Again, look, $6,500 goal. They're almost there. Let's make it happen. 41 days to go. So there's no excuse because you're going to get paid either this week or next week. So you have more than enough time to make it rain on this side. Right? And for anybody watching this live or close after being live, Man, we're we're on the precipice of maybe even hitting six grand by the end of day three. That would blow my mind. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. I know. I know. Today's Wednesday, and some of y'all did get paid. All right, I I know this. And, and keep in mind for y'all that have never <laughs> backed a Kickstarter, Kickstarter doesn't actually charge your payment method until the campaign is over. So if you you know you know that you might be getting your income tax money in the next couple of weeks, but you you know you don't have it now. Don't worry. You're basically just promising me in good faith that 
at the end of February, when this campaign is over, that you're going to be prepared to pay the money that you've committed. And so it gives you that that little bit of flexibility. And helping us out early is is huge because what it does is it tells the Kickstarter algorithm that this is something that people want. And, and it gives them the incentive of putting us on that Kickstarter front page to get more people involved. And the better we do, the more the more free stuff we get to unlock. You know, those stretch goals are free upgrades for y'all uh, because I believe in de delivering as much value as I can. Like I said, that that comes out of my pocket because I, I'm grateful and I want to put us in that position. Like if we go like crazy numbers, I don't know if, if you guys saw the stretch goal. If we do 10 grand, that A cover, that beautiful A cover that Sam did is going to turn into a wraparound cover for free, Ooh. for free. Ooh. All you got to do is bring people into the fold. And the cool thing is we actually have a referral program that we're going to be launching. So if you bring somebody directly in into backing the book, the, the the backer with the most referrals will have the option to win a crazy cool new prize uh, that uh -oh. will be revealed in an update toward the uh -oh. end of the week. Uh-oh, uh-oh, stay tuned. Again, you want to stay updated? This, this is how simple it is, folks, all right? Go follow all things Area 51 at his link tree. Sign up, sign up, sign up, all right? He got his socials, his Kickstarter, everything is in that mother. You know, and again, I could even make it that easier. If you guys, oh, oh link tree, too much things to click here one click go to that darn kickstarter and support it today that that's what you got to do all right like, thank yo, you right Alex. here yo right there the geek fortress says yo greetings from the fortress of solitude Wepa, thanks for tuning in yo support this project all right? i want to see this go up 55 25 they need to give it a quick refresh did anything change never know that somebody puts in anything no it stays the same how dare you guys make it rain right now <laughs> All right, bro, uh, there's two things left. First, thank you as a fan to a creator. Thank you for being awesome and, and putting your vision out there and sharing it with the world and with us. I fell in love with it, so I think you've done a wonderful job. I can't wait to see what else you're going to be bringing to the game, homie. You are a future legend in the making. I already see it. Keep that tenacity. You keep that drive, homie, and I see nothing but greatness for you. Thank you, bro. I do. Thank you, man. It means the world. It's it's conversations like these that that give me that drive and that motivation to to stay hungry and to tell better stories, um, and it, and it means the world, man. So thank you for giving giving me this platform, you know, to unfurl my wings and, and talk about story and be passionate and be a geek, you know. Um, <laughs> it it is a pleasure, and and I'm grateful, truly, like for like just person to person that you you're connecting with this story because it means a lot to me. Uh, and, and I, I'm just, you know, um, I, I'm honored and I'm humbled by, by your support and, and by anybody's support that, uh, that decides to give this story a chance, man. So look, thank you geek, for having me. Look at Geek Fortress is already, already supporting. Says, I love this man and his stories. Wepa! You. There you go. Geek, make it happen. Get one of them good ones too. Make it rain on the big man. All right. You know what <laughs> it is. All right. And, uh, lastly, advice. What one piece of advice you would give to someone coming up in the game right now? Always be prepared to change. Always be prepared to grow. Never get too comfortable. You know, it is, it's okay to appreciate what you've done and what you've been able to do. But the minute that you, that you become satisfied by that is the minute that you stagnate. And I think when it comes to really anything like stagnation is death. Um, and, and you see that with some of those bigger names in the industry that just get too comfortable. They've had their success and, and the stories they begin to tell after that, you know, I think have like, will sometimes have depreciating returns. And oh, so yes. my, my biggest piece of advice is as you create, always, always stay on, on the path of growth. Look at what you could have done better. Think about what you did well and how you might be able to, um, you know, kind of augment that and change that and do something new and do something different um and, and be you know be open to change and 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 yeah i think that's the biggest piece of advice i could possibly give there you go folks listen listen in do that exactly fit in do what you gotta do you know what i mean change if you need be it's all right man it's all part of growth that's what it is yo that's right the reeking batman agree i mean if the reeking batman agrees yo because he's always ready you know what i mean the batman has given you the blessing. Wepa! <laughs> I love it. All right, kiddos. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you, Trevor, for your time. I know this is going to get funded before the end of the week, for sure. Thanks, uh, bro. It is an amazing book. One last time, folks, the Linktree Pocket Watch Press. All right? And, of course, the Kickstarter. 
Area 51, the Helix Project number six. Support. Let's make it one of those projects that Kickstarter just loves, all right? Thank you again. Mi gente, hasta la próxima. You know what it is. Comic Crusaders, Undercover Capes. Wepa! Thank you for listening to the Comic Crusaders podcast. If you like the content, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, please visit ComicCrusaders.com and our extended podcast family over at UndercoverCapes.com. And also, make sure to download the Comic Crusaders app on the Google Play Store today. 